Now, let me start today's editorial with a personal story. I used to fill my 1.8 liter tank at 220 CDs. Yes, 220 CDs. Now, I spend 374 CDs. Fuel prices have increased, and these increases have made me apprehensive. Lately, I've had anxiety issues and palpitations because of fuel prices, not to mention the city, which has depreciated badly. The Ghana city is now the worst performing currency among Africa's top currencies. That is according to Bloomberg. Bloomberg pegs the depreciation of the city to the dollar at 8.86% between January 1, 2022 and February 25, 2022. So when crude oil price goes up, we feel it. And this is making many people nervous. Uh, I'm from Alajo. I take her from Alajo, coming to circle, going to police depot. Hey, police headquarters. You see, it's too high. It's too high for me. Because look at my children, because I want to pay and then pay myself. Yeah, so it's too high. People are crying over fuel prices and they're crying over food prices. Prices are up. LPG prices are up by 15%. Transportation prices are also up by 15%. So people are tightening their budgets daily. But, and it's not to be expected, or it is to be expected, government is very uncomfortable when the public hits them with the truth. And the truth is that Ghanaians are suffering. And remember, all this is happening at a time when government is also desperately trying to push through the unpopular e-levy, although it has received substantial public backlash. Now, against this background, we hear comments of people saying the current terrible economic climate is ripe for a coup. Not want a coup in this country. Yet I fear that if we do not act quickly, we may have one in our hands very soon. That may appear to be a solution to some, but we here at Joy News disagree vehemently. And I will come to that momentarily. But first, listen to these men, or this man, who participated in a coup and why it is never, never the option or solution to the prevailing economic difficulties. So listen with rapt attention. Those of you who have never experienced a coup because you were not born or not in the country at the time it happened here in Ghana. Listen. I think that uh, it's, a, it's a sad state if uh, people are advocating for... Uh, military overthrows of, uh, 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 of uh, governments because uh, we've done it all and we'll always go back to the same state. So it's pointless. Well, if that did not convince you, then let me break it down further for you. Why a coup should never, never be entertained as an option. Number one, a coup would mean the curtailing of many rights and personal liberties will be in jeopardy. I mean, think about it. Currently, many people feel there's a subtle culture of silence because when they criticize the government, they are most often victimized. Imagine if we cannot speak at all, at all. Imagine a country without MPs. It would mean that whoever is head of state would issue decrees without any opposition. Is that what we want? And number two, a coup will set our development back. There is no argument about that. There are several states that are still struggling to get back on their feet after going through uprisings and overthrows. Number three, our democracy. Sure, I mean, all around us, military takeovers are on the rise. Some have attributed that to the failure of democracy, but we must cherish our democracy. It's easy to take it for granted, but we must be proud of the fact that, they are, well, in spite of some disturbances, we still choose to go to the polls to change governments. You might ask, but Araba, have our leaders adequately tackled our social economic challenges? Of course not. We need to hold them to the fire and compel them to address our needs. Freedom of expression and personal liberties are great, but we must eat too. I'm sure you agree with me. So the government must urgently address the bread and butter issues of the people. But are they listening? Do they care enough? The consequences of not keeping promises and improving the living standards of the people is needless hardship. Mr. President, I know your job is a difficult one, but you are in power and you have a responsibility to make Ghanaians live better. So it's not asking much when we say, fulfill your part of the social contract. <laughs> 